Don't just read NCERT. Listen it and feel it. Class 12, Biology, Chapter 8, Human Health and Disease Narrated by Vanya Verma Health, for a long time, was considered as a state of body and mind where there was a balance of certain humors. This is what early Greeks, like Hippocrates, as well as Indian Ayurveda, system of medicine asserted. It was thought that persons with black bile belonged to hot personality and would have fevers. This idea was arrived at by pure reflective thought. The discovery of blood circulation by William Harvey using experimental method and demonstration of normal body temperature in persons with black bile using thermometer disproved the good humor hypothesis of health. In later years, biology stated that mind influences through neural system and endocrine system, our immune system and that our immune system maintains our health. Hence, mind and mental state can affect our health. Of course, Health is affected by 1. Genetic disorders, deficiencies with which a child is born and deficiencies or defects which the child inherits from parents from birth, 2. Infections, and 3. Lifestyle including food and water we take, rest and exercise we give to our bodies, habits that we have or lack, etc. The term health is very frequently used by everybody. How do we define it? Health does not simply mean absence of disease or physical fitness. It could be defined as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. When people are healthy, they are more efficient at work. This increases productivity and brings economic prosperity. Health also increases longevity of people and reduces infant and maternal mortality. Balanced diet, personal hygiene and regular exercise are very important to maintain good health. Yoga has been practiced since time immemorial to achieve physical and mental health. Awareness about diseases and their effect on different bodily functions, vaccination, immunization against infectious diseases, proper disposal of wastes, control of vectors and maintenance of hygiene in food and water resources are necessary for achieving good health. When the functioning of one or more organs or systems of the body is adversely affected, characterized by appearance of various signs and symptoms, we say that we are not healthy, that is, we have a disease. Diseases can be broadly grouped into infectious and non-infectious. Diseases which are easily transmitted from one person to another are called infectious diseases. Infectious diseases are very common and every one of us suffers from these at some time or other. Some of the infectious diseases like AIDS are fatal. Among non-infectious diseases, cancer is the major cause of death. Drug and alcohol abuse also affect our health adversely. 8.1 Common Diseases in Humans A wide range of organisms belonging to bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoans, helminths, etc. could cause diseases in man. Such disease-causing organisms are called pathogens. 
Most parasites are therefore pathogens as they cause harm to the host by living in or on them. The pathogens can enter our body by various means, multiply and interfere with normal vital activities, resulting in morphological and functional damage. Pathogens have to adapt to life within the environment of the host. For example, the pathogens that enter the gut must know a way of surviving in the stomach at a low pH and resisting the various digestive enzymes. A few representative members from different groups of pathogenic organisms are discussed here along with the diseases caused by them. Preventive and control measures against these diseases in general are also briefly described. Salmonella typhi is a pathogenic bacterium which causes typhoid fever in human beings. These pathogens generally enter the small intestine through food and water contaminated with them and migrate to other organs through blood. Sustained high fever, 39 to 40 degrees Celsius, weakens stomach pains, constipation, headache, and loss of appetite are some of the common symptoms of this disease. Intestinal perforation and death may occur in several cases. Typhoid fever could be confirmed by vital test. A classic case in medicine, that of Mary Mallon, nicknamed Typhoid Mary, is worth mentioning here. She was a cook by profession and was a typhoid carrier who continued to spread typhoid for several years through the food she prepared. Bacteria like Streptococcus, Pneumonia and Haemophilus influenza are responsible for the disease pneumonia in humans, which infects the alveoli, air-filled sacs of the lungs. As a result of the infection, the alveoli get filled with fluid leading to severe problems in respiration. The symptoms of pneumonia include fever, chills, cough, and headache. In severe cases, the lips and fingernails may turn grey to bluish in colour. A healthy person acquires the infection by inhaling the droplets, aerosols released by an infected person or even by sharing glasses and utensils with an infected person. Dysentery, plague, diphtheria, etc. are some of the other bacterial diseases in man. Many viruses also cause diseases in human beings. Rhinoviruses represent one such group of viruses which cause one of the most infectious human ailments, the common cold. They infect the nose and respiratory passage but not the lungs. The common cold is characterized by nasal congestion and discharge, sore throat hoarseness, cough, headache, tiredness, etc., which usually last for three to seven days. Droplets resulting from cough or sneezes of an infected person are either inhaled directly or transmitted through contaminated objects such as pens, books, cups, doorknobs, computer keyboard or mouse, etc and cause infection in a healthy person. Some of the human diseases are caused by protozoans too. You might have heard about malaria, a disease man has been fighting since many years. Plasmodium, a tiny protozoan, is responsible for this disease. Different species of Plasmodium, P. vivex, P. malaria, and P. flasciparum are responsible for different types of malaria. Of these, maglinant malaria caused by Plasmodium 
falciparum is the most serious one and can even be fatal. Let us take a glance at the life cycle of Plasmodium. Plasmodium enters the human body as sporozoites, infectious form, through the bite of an infected female Anopheles mosquito. The parasites initially multiply within the liver cell and then attack the red blood cells RBCs, resulting in their rupture. The rupture of RBCs is associated with release of a toxic substance, hemozoin, which is responsible for the chill and high fever recurring every 3 to 4 days. When a female Anopheles mosquito bites an infected person, these parasites enter the mosquito's body and undergo further development. The parasites multiply within them to form sporozoites that are stored in their salivary glands. When these mosquitoes bite a human, sporozoites are introduced into his or her body, thereby initiating the events mentioned above. It is interesting to note that the malarial parasite requires two hosts, human and mosquitoes, to complete its life cycle. The female Anopheles mosquito is the vector, transmitting agent to Entamoebia histolytica is a protozoan parasite in the large intestine of human, which causes amoebiasis, amoebia dysentery. Symptoms of this disease include constipation, abdominal pain and cramps, stools with excess mucus and blood clots. Houseflies act as a mechanical carrier and serve to transmit the parasite from feces of infected person to food and food products, thereby contaminating them. Drinking water and food contaminated by fecal matters are the main source of infection. Ascaris, the common roundworm, and Vosheria, the flyreal worm, are some of the helminths which are known to be pathogenic to man. Ascaris, an intestinal parasite, causes ascariasis. Symptoms of these disease include internal bleeding, muscular pain, fever, anemia, and blockage of intestinal passage. The eggs of the parasite are excreted along with the feces of infected persons which contaminate soil, water, plants, etc. A healthy person acquires this infection through contaminated water, vegetables, fruits, etc. Vosheria, W. Bancrofti and W. Malai, the filarial worms, cause a slowly developing chronic inflammation of the organs in which they live for many years. Usually, the lymphatic vessels of the lower limbs and the disease is called elephantitis or filariasis. The genital organs are also often affected, resulting in gross deformities. The pathogens are transmitted to a healthy person through the bite of a female mosquito vectors. Many fungi belonging to the genera Microsporum, Trichophyton, and Epidermiphyton are responsible for ringworms which is one of the most common infectious diseases in man. Appearance of dry, scaly lesions on various parts of the body such as skin, nails and scalp are the main symptoms of the disease. These lesions are accompanied by intense itching. Heat and moisture help these fungi grow which makes them thrive in skin folds such as those in the groin or between the toes. Ringworms are generally acquired from soil or by using towels, 
clothes or even the comb of infected individuals. Maintenance of personal and public hygiene is very important for prevention and control of many infectious diseases. Measures for personal hygiene include keeping the body clean, consumption of clean drinking water, food, vegetables, fruits, etc. Public hygiene includes proper disposal of waste, excreta, periodic cleaning and disinfection of water reservoirs, pools, cesspools and tanks and observing standard practices of hygiene in public catering. These measures are particularly essential where the infectious agents are transmitted through food and water such as typhoid, amoebiasis and ascariasis. In cases of airborne disease such as pneumonia and common cold, in addition to the above measures, close contact with the infected persons or their belongings should be avoided. For diseases such as malaria and filariasis that are transmitted through insect vectors, the most important measure is to control or eliminate the vectors and their breeding places. This can be achieved by avoiding stagnation of water in and around residential areas, regular cleaning of household coolers, use of mosquito nets, introducing fishes like gambusia in ponds that feed on mosquito larvae, spraying of insecticides in ditches, drainage areas and swamps, etc. In addition, doors and windows should be provided with wire mesh to prevent the entry of mosquitoes. Such precautions have become more important, especially in the light of recent widespread incidences of vector-borne Aedes mosquitoes. Diseases like dengue and chikungunya in many parts of India. The advancements made in biological science have armed us to effectively deal with many infectious diseases. The use of vaccines and immunization programs have enabled us to completely eradicate a deadly disease like smallpox. A large number of other infectious diseases like polio, diphtheria, pneumonia and tetanus have been controlled to a large extent by the use of vaccines. Biotechnology, about which you will read more in Chapter 12, is at the verge of making available newer and safer vaccines. Discovery of antibiotics and various other drugs has also enabled us to effectively treat infectious diseases. 8.2 Immunity Every day we are exposed to a large number of infectious agents. However, only a few of these exposures result in disease. Why? This is due to the fact that the body is able to defend itself from most of these foreign agents. This overall ability of the host to fight the disease-causing organisms conferred by the immune system is called immunity. Immunity is of two types, one, innate immunity and two, acquired immunity. 8.2.1 Innate Immunity Innate immunity is non-specific type of defense that is present at the in time of birth. This is accomplished by providing different type of barriers to the entry of foreign agents into our body. Innate immunity consists of four types of barriers. These are physical barriers. Skin on our body is the main barrier which prevents entry of microorganisms. Mucus coating of the epithelium, lining of the respiratory, gastrointestinal and urogenital tracts also help in trapping microbes entering our body. Physiological barriers. Acid in the stomach, saliva in the mouth, 
tears from eyes all prevent microbial growth cellular barriers certain type of leukocytes wbc of our body like polymorphonuclear leukocyte pmnl neutrophils and monocytes and natural killer type of lymphocytes in the blood as well as macrophages in tissues can phagocytose and destroy microbes cytokine barriers virus infected cells secrete proteins called interferons which protect non infected cells from further viral infection 8.2.2 acquired immunity acquired immunity on the other hand is pathogen specific it is characterized by memory this means when our body encounters a pathogen for the first time it produces a response called primary response which is of low intensity subsequent encounters with the same pathogen elicits a highly intensified secondary or an amnestic response this is ascribed to the fact that our body appears to have memory of the first encounter the primary and secondary immune responses are carried out with the help of two special types of lymphocytes present in our blood that is b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes the b lymphocytes produce an army of proteins in response to pathogens into our blood to fight with them these proteins are called antibodies the t cells themselves do not secrete antibodies but help b cells to produce them each antibody molecule has four peptide chains two small called light chains and two longer called heavy chains hence an antibody is represented as h2l2 different types of antibodies are produced in our body iga igm ige igg are some of them a cartoon of an antibody is given in figure 8.4 because of these antibodies are found in the blood the response is also called humoral immune response this is one of the two types of our acquired immune response antibody mediated the second type is called cell mediated immune response or cell mediated immunity cmi the t lymphocytes mediate cmi Very often when some human organs like heart, eye, liver, kidney fail to function satisfactorily, transplantation is the only remedy in it to enable the patient to live a normal life. Then a search begins to find a suitable donor. Why is it that the organs cannot be taken from just anybody? What is it that the doctors check? graphs from just any resource an animal another primate or any human beings cannot be made since the graphs would be rejected sooner or later tissue matching blood group matching are essential before undertaking any graft or transplant and even after this the patient has to take immunosuppressants all his or her life the body is able to differentiate self and non self and the cell mediated immune response is responsible for the graft rejection 8.2.3 active and passive immunity when a host is exposed to antigens which may be in the form of living or dead microbes or other proteins antibodies are produced in the host body This type of immunity is called active immunity. Active immunity is slow and takes time to give its full effective response. Injecting the microbes deliberately 
during immunization or infectious organisms gaining access into body during natural infection induce active immunity. When ready-made antibodies are directly given to protect the body against foreign agents, it is called passive immunity. Do you know why mother's milk is considered very essential for the newborn infant? The yellowish fluid colostrum secreted by mother during the initial days of lactation has abundant antibodies IgA to protect the infant. The fetus also receives some antibodies from their mother through the placenta during pregnancy. These are some examples of passive immunity. 8.2.4 Vaccination and Immunization The principle of immunization or vaccination is based on the property of memory of the immune system. In vaccination, a preparation of antigenic proteins of pathogen or inactivated weakened pathogen vaccine are introduced into the body. The antibodies produced in the body against these antigens would neutralize the pathogenic agents during actual infection. The vaccines also generate memory. B and T cells that recognize the pathogens quickly on subsequent exposure and overwhelm the invaders with a massive production of antibodies. If a person is infected with some deadly microbes to which quick immune response is required as in tetanus, we need to directly inject the preformed antibodies or antitoxin, a preparation containing antibodies to the toxin. Even in cases of snake bites, the injection which is given to the patients contain preformed antibodies against the snake venom. This type of immunization is called passive immunization. Recombinant DNA technology has allowed the production of antigenic polypeptides of pathogen in bacteria or yeast. Vaccines produced using this approach would allow large-scale production and hence greater availability for immunization. Example, Hepatitis B vaccine produced from yeast. 8.2.5 Allergies When you have gone to a new place and suddenly you started sneezing, wheezing for no explained reason, and when you went away, your symptoms disappeared? Did this happen to you? Some of us are sensitive to some particles in the environment. The above-mentioned reaction could be because of allergy to pollen, mites, etc., which are different in different places. The exaggerated response of the immune system to certain antigens present in the environment is called allergy. The substances to which such an immune response is produced are called allergens. The antibodies produced to these are of IgE type. Common examples of allergens are mites and dust, pollens, animal dander, etc. Symptoms of allergic reactions include sneezing, watery eyes, running nose, and difficulty in breathing. Allergy is due to the release of chemicals like histamine and serotonin for the mast cells. For determining the cause of allergy, the patient is exposed to or injected with very small doses of possible allergens and the reactions studied. The use of drugs like antihistamine, adrenaline, and steroids quickly reduce the symptoms of allergy. Somehow, modern-day lifestyle has resulted in lowering of immunity and more sensitivity to allergens. More and more children in metro cities of India suffer from allergies and asthma due to sensitivity to the environment. 
This could be because of the protective environment provided early in life. 8.2.6 Autoimmunity Memory-based acquired immunity evolved in higher vertebrates based on the ability to differentiate foreign organisms. Example, pathogens from self cells. While we still do not understand the basis of this, two corollaries of this ability have to be understood. 1. Higher vertebrates can distinguish foreign molecules as well as foreign organisms. Most of the experimental immunology deals with this aspect. 2. Sometimes due to genetic and other unknown reasons, the body attacks self cells. This results in damage to the body and is called autoimmune disease. Rheumatoid arthritis, which affects many people in our society, is an autoimmune disease. 8.2.7 Immune System in the Body The human immune system consists of lymphoid organs, tissues, cells, and soluble molecules like antibodies. As you have read, immune system is unique in the sense that it recognizes foreign antigens, responds to these and remembers them. The autoimmune system also plays an important role in the allergic reactions, autoimmune diseases and organ transplantation. Lymphoid organs These are the organs where origin and or maturation and proliferation of lymphocytes occur. The primary lymphoid organ are bone marrow and thymus where immature lymphocytes differentiate into antigen-sensitive lymphocytes. After maturation, the lymphocytes migrate to secondary lymphoid organs like spleen, lymph nodes, tonsils, pyres patches of small intestine and appendix. The secondary lymphoid organs provide the sites for interaction of lymphocytes with the antigen which then proliferate to become effector cells. The location of various lymphoid organs in the human body is shown in figure 8.5. The bone marrow is the main lymphoid organ where all blood cells including lymphocytes are produced. The thymus is a lobed organ located near the heart and beneath the breast bone. The thymus is quite large at the time of birth but keeps reducing in size with age and by the time puberty is attained, it reduces to a very small size. Both bone marrow and thymus provide microenvironments for the development and maturation of T lymphocytes. The spleen is a large bean-shaped organ. It mainly contains lymphocytes and phagocytes. It acts as a filter of the blood by trapping blood-borne microorganisms. Spleen also has a large reservoir of erythrocytes. The lymph nodes are small solid structures located at different points along the lymphatic system. Lymph nodes serve to trap the microorganisms or other antigens which happen to get into the lymph and tissue fluid. Antigens trapped in the lymph nodes are responsible for the activation of lymphocytes present there and are caused the immune response. There is lymphoid tissue also located within the lining of the major tracts, respiratory, digestive and urogenital tracts, also called mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, MALT. It constitutes about 50% of the lymphoid tissue in human body. 8.3 AIDS The word AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. This means deficiency of immune system acquired during the lifetime of an individual indicating that it is not a congenital disease. Syndrome means a group of symptoms. 
AIDS was first reported in 1981 and in the last 25 years or so it has spread all over the world killing more than 25 million persons AIDS is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus HIV a member of a group of viruses called retrovirus which have an envelope enclosing the RNA genome transmission of hiv infection generally occurs by a sexual contact with infected person b by transfusion of contaminated blood and blood products c by sharing infected needles as in the case of intravenous drug abusers and d from infected mother to her child through placenta so People who are at high risk of getting this infection includes individuals who have multiple sexual partners, drug addicts who take drugs intravenously, individuals who require repeated blood transfusions, and children born to an HIV infected mother. Do you know when do people need repeated blood transfusions? Find out and make a list of such conditions. It is important to note that HIV AIDS is not spread by mere touch or physical contact. It only spreads through bodily fluids. It is hence imperative for the physical and psychological well-being that the HIV AIDS infected persons are not isolated from family and society. There is always a time lag between the infected and appearance of AIDS symptoms this period may vary from a few months to many years usually 5 to 10 years after getting into the body of the person the virus enters into the macrophages where rna genome of the virus replicates to form viral dna with the help of the enzyme reverse transcriptase This viral DNA gets incorporated into host cell's DNA and directs the infected cells to produce virus particles. The macrophages continue to produce virus and in this way acts as like an HIV factory. Simultaneously, HIV enters into helper T lymphocytes Th, replicates and produces progeny viruses. The progeny viruses released in the blood attack other helper T lymphocytes. This is repeated leading to a progressive decrease in the number of helper T lymphocytes in the body of the infected person. During this period, the person suffers from bouts of fever, diarrhea, and weight loss. Due to decrease in the number of helper T lymphocytes, the person starts suffering from infections that could have been otherwise overcome, such as those due to bacteria, especially Mycobacterium, viruses, fungi, and even parasites like Toxoplasma. The patient becomes so immunodeficient that he or she is unable to protect himself or herself against these infections. A widely used diagnostic test for AIDS is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay (ELISA). Treatment of AIDS with antiretroviral drugs is only partially effective. They can only prolong the life of the patient but cannot prevent death which is inevitable. Prevention of AIDS As AIDS has no cure, prevention is the best option. Moreover, HIV infection more often spreads due to conscious behavior patterns and is not something that happens inadvertently. Like pneumonia or typhoid Of course, infections in blood transfusion patients, newborns from mother, etc., may take place due to poor monitoring. The only excuse may be ignorance, and it has been rightly said, "Don't die of ignorance." In our country, the National AIDS Control Organization 
एन ए सी ओ एंड अदर नॉन गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एन जी ओज आर डूइंग अ लॉट टू एजुकेट पीपल अबाउट एड्स डब्ल्यू एच ओ हैज स्टार्टेड अ नंबर ऑफ प्रोग्राम्स टू प्रिवेंट द स्प्रेडिंग ऑफ एच आई वी इन्फेक्शन मेकिंग ब्लड फ्रॉम ब्लड बैंक सेफ फ्रॉम एच आई वी इंश्योरिंग द यूज ऑफ ओनली डिस्पोजेबल नीडल्स एंड सी रेंजेस इन पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल्स एंड क्लिनिक्स फ्री डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ कॉन्डम्स कंट्रोलिंग ड्रग अब्यूज एडवोकेटिंग सेफ सेक्स and promoting regular checkups for hiv in susceptible population are some such steps taken up infection with hiv or aids is something that should not be hidden since then the infection may spread to many more people hiv aids infected people need help and sympathy instead of being shunned by society unless society recognizes it as a problem to be dealt with in a collective manner the chances of wider spread of the disease increase manifold it is a malady that can only be tackled by the society and medical fraternity acting together to prevent the spread of the disease 8.4 cancer Cancer is one of the most dreaded diseases of human beings and is a major cause of death all over the globe. More than a million Indians suffer from cancer and a large number of them die from it annually. The mechanisms that underlie development of cancer or oncogenic transformation of cells, its treatment and control have been some of the most intense areas of research in biology and medicine in our body cell growth and differentiation is highly controlled and regulated in cancer cells there is breakdown of these regulatory mechanisms normal cells show a property called contact inhibition by virtue of which contact with other cells inhibits their uncontrolled growth cancer cells appears to have lost this property as a result of this cancerous cells just continue to divide giving rise to masses of cells called tumors tumors are of two types benign and malignant benign tumors normally remain confined to their original location and do not spread to other parts of the body and cause little damage the malignant tumors on the other hand are a mass of proliferating cells called neoplastic or tumor cells these cells grow very rapidly invading and damaging the surrounding normal tissues as these cells actively divide and grow they also starve the normal cells by competing for vital nutrients cells slowed from such tumors reach distant sites through blood and wherever they get lodged in the body they start a new tumor there this property called metastasis is the most feared property of malignant tumors causes of cancer transformation of normal cells into cancerous neoplastic cells may be introduced by physical chemical or biological agents these agents are called carcinogens ionizing radiations like x rays and gamma rays and non ionizing radiations like uv cause dna damage leading to neoplastic transformation The chemical carcinogens present in tobacco smoke have been identified as a major cause of lung cancer. Cancer-causing viruses called oncogenic viruses have genes called viral oncogenes. Furthermore, several genes called cellular oncogenes, CONC or proto-oncogenes have been identified in normal cells which when activated under certain conditions could lead to oncogenic transformation of the cells cancer detection and diagnosis 
Early detection of cancers is essential as it allows the disease to be treated successfully in many cases. Cancer detection is based on biopsy and histopathological studies of the tissue and blood and bone marrow tests for increased cell counts in the case of leukemias. In biopsy, a piece of suspected tissue cut into thin sections is stained and examined under microscope histopathological studies by a pathologist techniques like radiography use of x-rays ct computed tomography and mri magnetic resonance imaging are very useful to detect cancers of internal organs Computed tomography uses x-rays to generate a three-dimensional image of the internals of an object. MRI uses strong magnetic fields and non-ionizing radiations to accurately detect pathological and physiological changes in the living tissue. Antibodies against cancer-specific antigens are also used for detection of certain cancers. Techniques of molecular biology can be applied to detect genes in individuals with inherited susceptibility to certain cancers. Identification of such genes which predispose an individual to certain cancers may be very helpful in prevention of cancers. Such individuals may be advised to avoid exposure to particular carcinogens to which they are susceptible. Example: tobacco smoke in case of lung cancer. Treatment of cancer. The common approaches for treatment of cancer are surgery, radiation therapy, and immunotherapy. In radiotherapy, tumor cells are irradiated lethally taking proper care of the normal tissues surrounding the tumor mass several chemotherapeutic drugs are used to kill cancerous cells some of these are specific for particular tumors majority of drugs have side effects like hair loss anemia etc most cancers are treated by combination of surgery radiotherapy and chemotherapy Tumor cells have been shown to avoid detection and destruction by immune system. Therefore, the patients are given substances called biological response modifiers such as alpha interferon which activates their immune system and helps in destroying the tumor. 8.5 Drugs and Alcohol Abuse Surveys and statistics show that the use of drugs and alcohol has been on the rise especially among the youth. This is really a cause of concern as it could result in many harmful effects. Proper education and guidance would enable youth to safeguard themselves against these dangerous behavior patterns and follow healthy lifestyles. The drugs which are commonly abused are opioids, cannabinoids and coca alkaloids majority of these are obtained from flowering plants some are obtained from fungi opioids are drugs which bind to specific opioid receptors present in our central nervous system and gastrointestinal tract heroin commonly called smack is chemically diacetyl morphine which is white odorless bitter crystalline compound this is obtained by acetylation of morphine which is extracted from the latex of poppy plant papaver somniferum generally taken by snorting and injection heroin is a depressant and slows down body functions cannabinoids are a group of chemicals which interact with cannabinoid receptors present principally in the brain natural cannabinoids are obtained from inflorescence of the plant cannabis sativa the flower tops leaves and resin of cannabis plant are produced in various combination to produce marijuana hashish charas and ganja 
generally taken by inhalation or oral ingestion these are known for their effects on cardiovascular system of the body coca alkaloid or cocaine is obtained from coca plant erythroxylum coca native to south america it interferes with the transport of neurotransmitter dopamine cocaine commonly called coke or crack is usually snorted it has a potent stimulating action on the central nervous system producing a sense of euphoria and increased energy excessive dosage of cocaine causes hallucinations other well known plants with hallucination properties are atropa belladonna and datura these days cannabinoids are also being abused by some sports persons drugs like barbiturates amphetamines benzodiazepines and other similar drugs that are normally used as medicines to help patients cope with mental illnesses like depression and insomnia are often abused morphine is a very effective sedative and painkiller and is very useful in patients who have undergone surgery several plants fruits and seeds having hallucinogenic properties have been used for hundreds of years in folk medicine religious ceremonies and rituals all over the globe when these are taken for a purpose other than medicinal use or in amounts frequency that impairs one's physical physiological or psychological functions it constitutes drug abuse smoking also paves the way to hard drugs tobacco has been used by human beings for more than 400 years it is smoked chewed or used as a snuff tobacco contains a large number of chemical substances including nicotine and alkaloid Nicotine stimulates adrenal gland to release adrenaline and noradrenaline into blood circulation both of which raise blood pressure and increase heart rate Smoking is associated with increased incidence of cancers of lung urinary bladder and throat bronchitis emphysema coronary heart disease gastric ulcer etc Tobacco chewing is associated with increased risk of cancer of the oral cavity. Smoking increases carbon monoxide CO content in blood and reduces the concentration of heme-bound oxygen. This causes oxygen deficiency in the body. When one buys a packets of cigarettes, one cannot miss the statutory warning that is present on the packing. which warns against smoking and says how it is injurious to health yet smoking is a very prevalent in society both among young and old knowing the dangers of smoking and chewing tobacco and its additive nature the youth and old need to avoid these habits any addict requires counseling and medical help to get rid of the habit 8.5.1 Adolescence and Drug Alcohol Abuse Adolescence means both a period and a process during which a child becomes mature in terms of his or her attitudes and beliefs for effective participation in society. The period between 12 to 18 years of age may be thought of as adolescence period. In other words, adolescence is a bridge linking childhood and adulthood. Adolescence is accompanied by several biological and behavioral changes. Adolescence thus is a very vulnerable phase of mental and psychological development of an individual. Curiosity, need for adventure and excitement, experimentation constitute common causes which motivate youngsters towards drug and alcohol use a child's natural curiosity motivates him or her to experiment this is complicated further 
by effects that might be perceived as benefits of alcohol or drug use. Thus, the first use of drugs or alcohol may be out of curiosity or experimentation, but later the child starts using these to escape facing problems. Of late, stress from pressures to excel in academics or examinations has played a significant role in persuading the youngsters to try alcohol and drugs. The perception among youth that it is cool or progressive to smoke, use drugs or alcohol is also in a way major cause for youth to start these habits. Television, movies, newspapers, internet also help to promote this perception. Other factors that have been seen to be associated with the drug and alcohol abuse among adolescents are unstable or unsupportive family structure and peer pressure. 8.5.2 Addiction and Dependence Because of the perceived benefits, drugs are frequently used repeatedly. The most important thing which one fails to realize is the inherent addictive nature of alcohol and drugs. Addiction is a psychological attachment to certain effects, such as euphoria and a temporary feeling of well-being, associated with drugs and alcohol. These drive people to take them even when these are not needed or even when their use becomes self-destructive. With repeated use of drugs, the tolerance level of the receptors present in our body increases. Consequently, the receptors respond only to higher doses of drugs or alcohol, leading to greater intake and addiction. However, it should be clearly borne in mind that use of these drugs even once can be a forerunner to addiction. Thus, the addictive potential of drugs and alcohol pull the users into a vicious cycle leading to their regular use, abuse from which he or she may not be able to get out. In the absence of any guidance or counseling, the person gets addicted and becomes dependent on their use. Dependence is the tendency of the body to manifest a characteristic and unpleasant withdrawal syndrome if regular dose of drugs or alcohol is abruptly discontinued. This is characterized by anxiety, shakiness, nausea and sweating, which may be relieved when use is resumed again. In some cases, withdrawal symptoms can be severe and even life-threatening and the person may need medical supervision. Dependence leads to the patient to ignore all social norms in order to get sufficient funds to satiate his or her needs. These result in many social adjustment problems. 8.5.3 Effects of Drug Alcohol Abuse The immediate adverse effects of drug and alcohol abuse are manifested in the form of reckless behavior vandalism and violence. Excessive doses of drugs may lead to coma and death due to respiratory failure, heart failure or cerebral hemorrhage. A combination of drugs or their intake along with alcohol generally results in overdosing and even deaths. The most common warning sign of drug and alcohol abuse among youth including drop in academic performance, unexplained absence from school or college, lack of interest in personal hygiene, withdrawal, isolation, depression, fatigue, aggressive and rebellious behavior, deteriorating relationship with family and friends, loss of interest in hobbies, change in sleeping and eating habits, fluctuation in weight appetite, etc. There may even be some far-reaching implications of drug or alcohol abuse. If an abuser is unable to get money to buy drugs or alcohol, he or she may turn to stealing. 
the adverse effects are just not restricted to the person who is using drugs or alcohol. At times, a drug or alcohol addict becomes the cause of mental and financial distress to his or her entire family and friends. Those who take drugs intravenously, direct injection into the vein using a needle and syringe, are much more likely to acquire serious infections like AIDS and Hepatitis B. The viruses which are responsible for these diseases are transferred from one person to another by sharing or infected needles and syringes. Both AIDS and Hepatitis B infections are chronic infections and ultimately fatal. Both can be transmitted through sexual contact or infected blood. The use of alcohol during adolescence may also have long-term effects. It could lead to heavy drinking in adulthood. The chronic use of drugs and alcohol damage nervous system and liver. Cirrhosis. The use of drugs and alcohol during pregnancy is also known to adversely affect the fetus. Another misuse of drugs is what certain sportspersons do to enhance their performance. They misuse narcotic, analgesics, anabolic, steroids, diuretics, and certain hormones in sports to increase muscle strength and bulk and to promote aggressiveness and as a result increase athletic performance. The side effects of the use of anabolic steroids in females include masculinization, features like males, increased aggressiveness, mood swings, depression, abnormal menstrual cycles, excessive hair growth on the face and body, enlargement of clitoris, deepening of voice. In males, it includes acne, increased aggressiveness, mood swings, depression, reduction of the size of testicles, decreased sperm production, potential for kidney and liver dysfunction, breast enlargement, premature baldness, enlargement of the prostate gland. These effects may be permanent with prolonged use. In the adolescent male or female, severe facial and body acne and premature closure of the growth centers of the long bones may result in stunted growth. 8.5.4 Prevention and Control The age-old adage of prevention is better than cure holds true here also. It is also true that habits such as smoking, taking drug or alcohol, are more likely to be taken up at a young age, more during adolescence. Hence, it is best to identify these situations that may push an adolescent towards use of drugs or alcohol and to take remedial measures well in time. In this regard, the parents and the teachers have a special responsibility. Parenting that combines with high levels of nurturance and consistent discipline has been associated with lowered risk of substance, alcohol, drugs, tobacco, abuse. Some of the measures mentioned here would be particularly useful for prevention and control of alcohol and drugs abuse among adolescents. 1. Avoid undue peer pressure. Every child has his or her own choice and personality which should be respected and nurtured. A child should not be pushed unduly to perform beyond his or her threshold limits, be it studies, sports, or other activities. 2. Education and Counseling Educating and counseling him or her to face problems and stresses and to accept disappointments and failures as a part of life. It would also be worthwhile to channelize the child's energy into healthy pursuits like sports, reading, music, yoga, and other extracurricular activities. 3. Seeking help from parents and peers. Help from parents and peers should be sought immediately so that they can guide appropriately. Help may even be sought from close and trusted friends. Besides getting proper advice to sort out their problems, 
This would help young to vent their feelings of anxiety and guilt. 4. Looking for danger signs Alert parents and teachers need to look for and identify the danger signs discussed above. Even friends, if they find someone using drugs or alcohol, should not hesitate to bring this to the notice of parents or teacher in the best interests of the person concerned. Appropriate measures would then be required to diagnose the malady and underlying causes. This would help in initiating proper remedial steps or treatment. 5. Seeking professional and medical help A lot of help is available in the form of highly qualified psychologists, psychiatrists and de-addiction and rehabilitation programs to help individuals who have unfortunately got in the quagmire of drug alcohol abuse. With such help, the affected individual with sufficient efforts and willpower can get rid of the problem completely and lead a perfectly normal and healthy life. Summary Health is not just the absence of disease. It is a state of complete physical, mental, social, psychological well-being. Diseases like typhoid, cholera, pneumonia, fungal infections of skin, malaria and many others are a major cause of distress to human beings. Vector-borne diseases like malaria, especially one caused by Plasmodium falciparum, if not treated may prove fatal. Besides personal cleanliness and hygiene, public health measures like proper disposal of waste, decontamination of drinking water, control of vectors like mosquitoes and immunization are very helpful in preventing these diseases. Our immune system plays the major role in preventing these diseases when we are exposed to disease-causing agents. The innate defenses of our body like skin, mucous membranes, antimicrobial substances present in our tears, saliva and the phagocytic cells help to block the entry of pathogens into our body. If the pathogens succeed in gaining entry to our body, specific antibodies, humoral immune response and cells cell-mediated immune response serve to kill these pathogens. Immune system has memory. On subsequent exposure to same pathogen, the immune response is rapid and more intense. This forms the basis of protection afforded by vaccination and immunization. Among other diseases, AIDS and cancer kill a large number of individuals worldwide. AIDS caused by the human immunodeficiency virus HIV is fatal but can be prevented if certain precautions are taken. Many cancers are curable if detected early and appropriate theoropathic measures are taken. Of late, drug and alcohol abuse among youth and adolescents is becoming another cause of concern. Because of the addictive nature of alcohol and drugs and their perceived benefits like relief from stress, a person may try taking these in the face of peer pressure, examinations related and competition related stresses. In doing so, he or she may get addicted to them. Education about their harmful effects, counseling and seeking immediate professional and medical help would totally relieve the individual from these evils. Mm-hmm.